All right, good evening, everybody. <laughs> we will get started with our joint HRA Planning Commission and City Council work session on uh, regarding a development off of Lindell Avenue, and I'll just pass it to our City Manager, Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Council Members, and Commissioners, uh, tonight we're here to consider a 112-unit multifamily development by North Bay at 6345 Lindale Avenue. And tonight we're looking, staff is looking for your feedback, and if it's overwhelmingly positive, then we would likely go to, straight to the HRA in January for a preliminary development agreement. If the discussion um, is it's clear that there's more questions and we need to have another work session, then we would do that. And then I'll turn it over to Director Stark. Uh, thank you. So tonight, just um, this is getting a little confusing because we have several projects in one small geographic area. So let me just set the stage a little bit. You have heard about um, a project close to here uh, where the Lynn 65 building is. Uh, that's a different proposal altogether. Uh, that's, that proposal is by a, a group called Enclave out of um, Fargo, the Fargo area. Uh, tonight, we have a proposal uh, for the 64th and Lindale. Uh, there's an existing building there, um, the um, 6345 Lindale is a 22-unit um, apartment building. I don't know the name of that building. Um, it, it says efficiency apartments on it. Uh, we, I don't know that I've ever had a uh, something other than that to go by. Um, and this is being proposed by uh, North Bay Development. Um, North Bay is uh, doing the Henley at the uh, Lindell Garden site. Now the Lindell Garden site was originally um, Colleen Carey and the Cornerstone Group was doing the whole project. Uh, as the project um, went along, North Bay came in um, and kind of peeled off a piece of that to build the Henley apartments. And then there are a handful of rental townhomes. Um, so North Bay is uh, constructing that portion of the project. Colleen Carey and the Cornerstone Group um, entered into a development agreement with the HRA for the entirety of the site. Uh, and that included a, um, a TIF district um, I believe it was a redevelopment TIF district in this case. Um, <clears throat> that was broken down into two TIF notes, one for the portion of the site that uh, the Cornerstone Group was doing, which are the high-end for sale condominiums. And then the other portion of the TIF note was just for the Henley Apartments and these rental townhomes I'd mentioned. Uh, the Cornerstone Group subsequently... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Signed over, assigned the uh, the second TIF note to North Bay, who's constructing that project. Uh, I know that there was some concerns on the Lindale Garden site about labor practices. Uh, the The project in which the um, concerning labor practices was happening on was the high end uh, condominiums, and so it was not the um, North Bay portion of the project that included the Henley. Uh, they have their own uh, work crews, uh, and it was not a part of that concern. So um, I think, you know, I, I've provided you with the staff report, um, kind of outlining some of the details, but I think I'm just going to pass it along to the development team, let them give you an update, and then if there are some things they didn't cover, I can jump back in or uh, as questions arise. So um, tonight we do have... Um, Let's see, Scott Nelson from DJR Architects and Laura Barrett from North Bay. I think that they're going to be the presenters. I'm not sure. Yeah. I think you can use this. Great. Um, you can sit. You can stand. Yeah, I can, I can sit. That's probably fine. How do I advance the slide? I'm just the arrows. Okay. 
Uh, evening, folks, and, and thank you for uh, getting us onto the, your agenda tonight. We're we're uh, we're excited to do another project in in uh, in Richfield. We really enjoyed the process last time uh, with the Henley. We think it's a great project. It should should be open in uh, uh, February sometime, I think, and. Uh, uh, we think it's 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 looking good, and and uh, we're we're getting some good uh, uh, interest in rent and renters, and uh, we're really excited to come and and do another project that that in in many ways is across the street. It's it's got some things that are different, but it's it's got some similarities too, and we're uh, some of the same sorts of unit types. Uh, is there a pointer with this, John, or is there? There it is. Oh. Okay, uh, a couple of things about this. Uh, that the existing building that's there, the 22 unit building is, is made up of, of studio apartments, which is sort of uh, naturally occurring uh, affordable housing. We're gonna, we're gonna leave that alone and do a, a number of uh, uh, repairs to it uh, for, for energy efficiency, replacing windows, replacing finishes. In the apartments, but still want to basically leave it as much as it is now, which is provides a, you know some good stable housing for uh, for the folks that are there. Uh, we'll fix up the common areas a little bit, but primarily sort of energy efficiency and finish uh, changes. The existing parking lot that is uh, that's next to it. Um, let's see, is this my, okay. That will remain too, and then the next four lots is where our new development will be. There's there's four <coughs> houses here. Our our building, uh, which is the front of its five stories, and the 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 uh, uh, four floors at the at the at the two pieces that come out, uh, will have. Uh, let's see, this this is basic. Look, we'll have a, a common area on the on the corner, and then we'll go around the. The uh, there's under this one has uh, like oops how do I get back to this this one also will have underground parking accessed by a driveway here you get into there'll be parking on the first floor uh, and then units in common area on the on the facing the street and then a parking garage from the lower level uh, accessed by a ramp and back so the ramp the building effectively screens the uh, the parking from both the uh, upper level and lower level access. And then the last, the last uh, parcel, we've got an additional surface lot as well as a, a trail access that will give us access off of 64th into Garfield Park and also provide a little bit of a buffer in, in terms of shadowing and height adjacencies to the uh, remaining house that'll remain to the to the east here, so it, we actually added that that parcel later later in the project. So we, we end up with a, uh, a one to one parking ratio between the existing building and the uh, and the new building. Uh, this is a view taken from the uh, the southwest that'll show what it'll look like kind of off the corner of Lindale as you approach it on 64th. Our large uh, glass area, common area, amenities. Then you can see down here we have a, some individual units uh, accessed off the street. And then the, these are the two, uh, two four-story sections and the, the larger uh, five-story section behind. Um, this is a little bit of the, of the area uh, and showing how, how our development fits into the sort of master plan of some of the other density. That's the, the Henley one. That's uh, our project and it's an eight unit townhome that, that sits behind it. And then it shows the connection that we'll have from most of most people access the park now from 63rd. There's really no way sort of landlocked from 64th. So it'll be we'll be able to access it from 64th. Um, we talked a little bit about the materials uh, on here as well. Most of the most of the building is, is going to be a uh, a type of metal uh, metal siding, both uh, with the, the, the two corners are an, an aluminum uh, uh, panel, and then the uh, the darker is uh, an aluminum or a, or a metal uh, uh, metal siding. 
And the first floor is brick, which we're looking at doing something very similar to the, the color that is on the Hanley. Um, this, this just shows kind of the overall plan and, and square footages and how this works. Uh, I can see we have, this is how we access the underground parking garage. This is one of the differences of this project. The uh, current Henley is all surface parking. Uh, and this one, and then you've got a surface uh, on grade parking that has the amenity area and a couple of units in front of it. And there's a, a little bit of a uh, lawn recreation area in back. And then the, the upper levels have the same sort of stack of, of units that are very similar size to the, to the Henley's, some few larger one bedrooms on the corners, but you know, in the low 400 square foot uh, uh, studio apartments that make up the bulk of the building. Um, and that's, that's it's, you know, it's a very, very similar unit types that we've, we've done with the, with the Henley project. And um, that's, that's pretty much our basic concept for this. Questions, comments? We have other people here. There's uh, uh, Laura Barrett and Garrett Duncan are here from uh, North Bay Development. Um, Mauricio Ochoa, my colleague from DJR, is here as well. Questions, um, Commissioner Levin. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I like I like the design. I, I think that the you know retaining the existing building and putting some renovations into it is 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 a great concept and and the overall concept I have no issue with. The one thing that I, that concerns me is the parking ratio. Um, you mentioned one to one. I think in the in the some of some of the documents that we got before it was um, I don't know how many spaces you're short, uh, but uh, do you? And this may be a preliminary question, but is there room in your cash flow or debt service coverage projections to allow you to right size this project to make this more in conformance with our parking uh, minimums? We're um it's probably a better question for the development team than than me. Um, if you want to, if you want to comment on that, Laura. But. I think I'm enjoying the fun. Um, most of these, all these are one bedrooms and studios, so we really don't see in a studio. You don't see more than one person typically. Um, so in general, that's where we're finding the ratio really does match. Um, so at this point, that's where where we're hoping to stick. Um, Reevaluating it is definitely something we can do if, if that's a requirement, but um, it really seems to stick with the type of units that we're seeing. Because I, I think the, the issue would be the overflow. Where would, you know, would that be along, I don't know, I, I can't remember if there is even parking along 64th Street um, that would be available or even, um, you know, bleeding into the neighborhood uh, for on-street parking <clears throat> would be my, my concern. Um, so for me, it's really just the number of units that are being put into this project uh, in, in, in um, comparison to the, the number of parking spaces available. We've been spending some time studying the existing building to see how that parking lot is utilized and it's not utilized fully. There's the number of units in that um, building does not match how many cars we're seeing in the parking lot. So that helps with our planning. Uh, this park, this, it's this parking lot here. Actually, we're, we're, we're contemplating maybe there might be some ability to borrow some of theirs, but because it's rarely full. I think something like that, for me personally, like an arrangement of, of somehow creating additional parking for this particular project with the number of units that you're proposing for me would be something that would be definitely needed. Director Stark, were you going to add anything? No, uh, you know, we. <laughs> The parking to the north that uh, belongs to those four other buildings, we've pulled up aerial photos uh, everywhere we can. Uh, either the, the county has done, or Google Earth, or uh, you know different things. And just at first blush, there is a lot of availability there. We haven't gone through and done the calculations on how many units that has and how many parking spaces they have. Uh, my my gut feeling is that they're way overparked. In that northern property, uh, and so it's. Um, I think there's a good possibility that this project could enter into an agreement to utilize some of their spaces. Um, but again, we'd want to do the calculations before we know that. Okay. Um, Commissioner Elliott. Um, historically, when we're talking about shared parking, 
it's my recollection that we'd look at permanent easements. So it's not a borrow, it's not a lease. But you need you need to have cross easements, isn't that correct? Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> a shared parking agreement, uh, which is a recorded document. Right, um, right. it's a recorded easement. It's yeah, is what you need, right? Yep. Okay. And <clears throat> can you demographically? I know when you proposed your original development and with the four hundred plus square feet and everything, I think if I recall. Uh, just reading reading articles about it when they're talking about uh, house sizing and everything in the metropolitan area, that was becoming kind of a trend a couple of years ago, and I think you were moving in that direction. In, in looking at that, do you have any demographics on a, a 400, 450 square foot ap apartment? Uh, how many people actually even use cars when, when they're looking for that sort of homing, housing? Because I think that's an important element that could be persuasive to us if historically what you're seeing, these are people are commuters or, or metro people, either bike, metro transit and everything just because of the size and, and they're, looking for, they're looking for a place to live in the privacy, but, but ordinarily they're a little bit more um, mobile in terms of using metro transit as opposed to buying cars and using them anyhow. So I'm just wondering if that wouldn't be a good demographic to look up and present to us. We have stats that we're seeing at our other um, complexes that we're building, but they're in Minneapolis. So we can compare that, but we are looking at a different demographic being in Metro versus Minneapolis. We are um, at 13% lease for Henley across the street. And that will probably be as we're continuing to go down what we can hmm. compare to. Um, and, and not all the spots, not every unit is renting a spot. At, at I, I would suggest we might be a little bit more similar to Minneapolis in terms of the demographics than maybe oh, okay. maybe it's being shown. We are promoting, we're uh, part of the marketing for Henley is that we are accessible on the bus line and things like that. People like it. We, we also are, we're also very bike friendly. I mean, we'll do uh, one bike bike storage place per unit and, and part of the part of the first floor plan will have a, a bike room, bike lounge where you can work on bikes and store bikes. And we think that's because of the you know adjacency to, to Lindale and some of the other commuting routes, we think that there's a, a lot of bike users would, would really like this type of uh, type of apartment and not have to store their bike in their apartment too as well. So right. Commissioner O'Leary. Um yeah, well, just a follow-up question on the property to the north. If there's so much ample available parking and there's a possibility of renting it or buying an easement or whatever, is there a possibility of avoiding having to do that surface lot on the east end and keeping that house there? Because if there is so much excess parking available, it would certainly be nice to not have to tear down a house for a surface lot. Well, um, the house to the east end um, kind of serves dual purposes um, with it being the parking and the access to Garfield mm. Park. Uh, originally, they were not showing the house to the east end in their plans. Uh, staff uh, <clears throat> suggested they at least look into it to provide that access to Garfield Park. Um, but perhaps there could be less parking there, and it could be you know proof of parking that um, in the future it could be converted to parking if it's needed. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe it could be um, more green space. Okay. Um, in, in general, I'm not... Super concerned about parking. I, I wish in general that we required a little bit less parking instead of having to individually justify it on each project because I think what we're hearing is typical for Richfield, um, especially these small units. Um, or alternatively, if we required based on the number of bedrooms like certain cities do as opposed to the number of units because we require the same number of spots for a two bedroom or a studio. Anyway, getting kind of into the weeds, sorry. But I, I'm not super concerned about parking here. I would certainly not want to see the number of apartments reduced. I think it's great how much you're able to fit on this site. So if there does need to be more parking, I hope it can come from that partially empty lot to the north. Other questions or comments from council or commissioners? Um, uh, council Member Whalen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I was hoping you could speak more to the, um, the renovation process and then the affordability plans. Um, maybe these are just two separate questions. Um, one, Obviously, you can't replace someone's windows without some amount of disruption, but it can, what, what steps would you take to minimize uh, the disruption to the existing tenants there? Well, well uh, a lot of times we've done these uh, sort of in-place repairs. Uh, on We've actually done complete renovations 
in the units with, uh, with folks remaining and, and, and done it in phases uh, where they actually have to be out of, the, out of their apartments, you know, from like nine to three or something like that and different phases of work can be done. And they're also fairly small. So you can literally replace a window during the day and, and it can be done in place over time. You'd clearly a, a phase of work that would be done in the summer, not the winter. Uh, and you can come in and do a cabinet replacement in a day and a flooring replacement on another day. It's just, it impacts folks, but they don't have to literally move out. They can actually keep their same unit. Um, and that's that's probably how we would do, do a project of this nature. So Great. I appreciate that and, and love that the, the renovation is part of the overall project. And then for the, the end total of affordable units, um, I was talking with Director Stark already, but um, figured I would ask you as well. It, it sounds like you are planning that some of the affordable units would continue to be in the existing building and some of them would be spread throughout the new building as well. Right. And do you at this time have, uh, are you leaning more toward the 20% at 50% AMI or 40 at 60? We figured that out. We figured, we haven't done, yeah, go ahead. I don't, I don't remember where we're I, I don't believe that they've done all of the calculations to know um, how it impacts the economics of the project one way or the other. Okay. We're also, I should add, I, mean, I, I didn't mention this when my pre initial comments. Uh, the, the existing building, because it's one of these sort of half level, isn't accessible. We'd be doing additional accessible units to sort of make up for the total in the new building. And also uh, there was one larger spot with actually two units on the first floor. We're actually contemplating making that a, uh, a little bit larger two bedroom uh, accessible, fully accessible type A unit that is something that apparently is fairly rare in the marketplace, but there's a, there's a need for. So we'd be sort of making that up with our new building. Council Member Seppel. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, is this working? No, I don't think it's on. Anyway, I wanted to follow up on the, the renovation question. You've had no mention of any of the plumbing stacks, and I know in other buildings that have renovated that has become an issue. Have you evaluated whether any of those need replacing, or are they in still good shape? Has this court haven't? We, we haven't. We haven't actually toured the entire building. We have kind of a representative idea of what's, but no, not, not in any detail yet, no. That was a surprise in some of the other buildings that were renovated that that needs to be looked at. But one thing I do like is the connection to Garfield Park, because I know they just re um, replaced all of the playground equipment and stuff there. And I understand with studios, you're probably going to have a lot of kids in Henley too, but it helps the rest of the neighborhood to have mm -hmm. that other opening. Yeah. So I really like that feature of it. Other questions, comments? Uh, Council Member Troutman. Um, I, I wanted to echo just a couple uh, comments that, uh, that my colleagues made. Um, it, it seems like a small thing, but it is an important thing to just show some consideration for the neighborhood and making that pathway to Garfield Park. Um, one thought, the Henley apartments are just across the street, I understand, so as you're looking for overflow parking, have maximum flexibility with buildings you already own. Um, Commissioner Kwam? Oh, I was, have two questions. Um, hey, mine's working. <laughs> Who are you marketing to, and uh, will those renovations will likely cause rental increases? Because you said it's our, now it's kind of naturally occurring um, affordable housing, so it'd be nice to keep it that way. So don't you expect the rents to go up when you do the... Um, we, right now, they are very low for the market. Um, they, they probably will increase at some point, but we, our intention is that we would keep it still naturally occurring. It, we wouldn't um, be making renovations to the point that it jumps the prices up to market. And who are you marketing to for the Henley to the other part? Um, I would say that it's the same demographic. 
that is at Henley. Um, of course, we would never turn somebody away. Fair Housing says you would take anybody that wants to live there, but our the candidate that we think that we're our, the niche person is that um, young professional, um, often single. We're seeing most of our units are typically rented to one person, so um, we're not seeing multiple people in a studio, typically even a one bedroom. So that young professional who is on the go, who loves to be in the local area, it's kind of. If you go to the Henley website, that is really a picture of who we're trying to draw there. Thank you. Um, so this might be a question also for our city staff. So for the existing building, um, what kind of condition do we know in overall what kind of condition it's in? Because I think anytime we have the opportunity to improve the quality in a situation like this, that's great. And to balance, you know, we want to keep it as affordable as possible. And so how do you strike that balance? So do you know what it's like in in that department. No, our uh, our most experienced housing inspector was on vacation this week, so I wasn't able to ask that question. I did ask other folks around the office and you know, there are some properties ar around the city that kind of have a not as good of a reputation. This isn't one of those. Mm -hmm. So I th I don't think it's a problem property in any way. Um, but you know, every property is unique and I'm sure it has some unique issues, um, but I just don't know what those are. Um, and then related to that project too, could you, you were talking, so you talked about windows and finishes. What's included in the category of finishes? Uh, uh, flooring, uh, paint, trim. Uh, if, if there's any damaged doors, we would replace doors. Generally we do new kitchen and bath cabinets. Okay. Uh, uh, with that plumbing fixtures. Okay. So um, thank you. And then it's but you'll a, keep the same plan. I think that's the mm -hmm. it wouldn't be moving walls around or anything like that. Is there a plan um, for the outside? Is, is there a thought to kind of incorporate it? And I'm it looks like you're using similar features for the Henley with this building um, for some consistency. Is that <laughs> the 22 unit existing? Is there any plan to incorporate that? So it all looks the same on the exterior or similar or no? Not really. I mean, that building, it's brick. The outside is actually in yeah. pretty good shape. We thought it needs a little work on the entry. If you yeah. recall the entry, I should have a photo of it, but it's it's just some steps and a door basically. So I think we'll, we'll try to work in a nice little canopy and and some landscaping around the mm -hmm. front to maybe better, better. Plus it's right on the corner of Lindale there. So I think we could play up the, the entry area and the, and the canopy a little nicer and some signage and lighting. So okay. we don't want to overdo that too much because then the, that takes the price right. of the rent. Right. Up, so. And then, so it's the existing um, unit. And then how many additional single family homes? Are, Properties. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah, how many single family homes are in would have to be would be impacted. Yeah, it's um <clears throat> three duplexes and one single family home. Oh, okay, this is why three duplexes and one single family. Okay, and then and just uh, I believe and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the developer has 100 percent of the properties under purchase agreement. That's yep. correct. Okay, and that was in the notes. Okay, um, and then it sounds like this is what you would do. Uh, with the existing units, but I think just, you know, if there are going to be changes and increases, it, we want to keep as much affordability and improve the quality as possible um, for our residents, and that's really important. And it sounds like that's the approach you're taking. Um, but again, communicating with the residents throughout the process and and um, taking that approach, I think, is is super important. Any other questions, um, Commissioner Hayford O'Leary? Um, just a couple of detailed questions about the site plan. Um, one is continuing what the mayor was asking about how the, that existing building gets integrated. Like you show the parking lot in the same place, will that literally be like you won't touch the pavement or you'll construct a new parking lot in that location? Um, we looked at it in detail. It wasn't in, in bad shape, but it is in the same location. It probably would get at minimum a seal coat and restriping okay. or something like that. Okay. I guess I am just hoping that it would just sort of be 
cleaned up in a reasonable way because there's I was just walking around there the other day and there's some sort of broken down fences and like abandoned clotheslines and things like that on the property currently. There, there's some some extra stuff around there. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. We'll <laughs> so. it up. They need some landscaping. The whole area around okay. the base of the building uh, and the, and the new building that. We've got but you'd sort of be landscaping it cohesively with the new development. Okay, that's Especially good. Because since it's on the corner, it's a very visible part. We'll yeah. Make sure it looks like at least it ties into the new development. Mm -hmm. so. um, a couple other details in the new building. Will those uh, ground floor units be walkout? Yes. Okay. And that's the one we were talking about making into, combining it into one unit that would be a larger completely accessible to bedroom. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's I, I really like how those have turned out on the Henley. It's nice to see sort of real front doors on the street and I think it's more more neighborly. Um and I guess my only other question is will you will you keep the little efficiency apartment sign on the old building? Because I'm hoping so. Yeah. yeah. We love that. We so love that. I would yeah, yeah I would tell you that um they're missing one part of their development team uh, who's a, a gentleman named Dan Oberpriller and Dan the first thing he told me about this apartment was how much he loved the sign <laughs> and that he really wants to keep the sign. <laughs> Other questions or comments? All right. I don't think we have any additional questions or comments. Um, is this helpful enough direction for staff? Do we want to have more discussion? Well, I think what I would plan on doing is proposing that we bring this to the HRA probably in January. Uh, and then that gives all of you um, a, a few weeks to send me an email and tell me if you think that's crazy. Uh, and if I get enough of those emails, then we would just reconvene a, a work session. Sounds good. Anyone in disagreement to that? Is that so then there'll be another <clears throat> opportunity. Did you say there's another work session regarding this project? No, there would not be unless I, I heard people um, okay asking for another one and, th and that's perfectly fine uh we're open to that um it, i just would would hate to have a work session just for the sake of having one okay. i guess i would like to make one final comment yeah I mean, we have time um the you know to the hra committee i mean it seems like a project like this which i, I i'm in favor for i think this is great um where we have options for for parking i would explore those options to try and get that one-to-one -one ratio up Without any true detriment to the to the overall feasibility of the project, but um, I think accepting a one to one versus exploring options that could make sure that there isn't any uh, negative impact to the surrounding neighborhood is something, especially in this particular um, configuration, that there there is there is designs that you can do or availability that you can do to make sure that we have that. Um, and I don't mean to harp on parking, um, but I get real concerned with a one to one ratio. Um, because the bleed over is where, where, where is it going to go if that occurs? Thank you. Yeah, and kind of maybe I'll talk a little bit more about next steps. This, in this case, the HRA doesn't own any property. Uh, the HRA's primary role would be um, to provide tax and current financing, and so the the HRA's main decision point would be that, and the development agreement would likely say something like, if you build. And then it would describe it very generally, X number of units with a value of X, then here's how the tax increment financing would work. Um, it, so the HRA wouldn't even talk about parking spaces. Uh, then when they go through the land use approval process, that would go planning commission, well, that would go, yeah, neighborhood meeting, planning commission, city council. And the starting point is that they have to meet all of the city standards, including um, right now the parking, the required parking is 1.25 per unit that can be reduced um, for factors such as proximity to transit or extraordinary bicycle facilities or a number of other things. Um, our, uh, it's been pointed out a couple of times that our uh, parking code is um, <clears throat> it's imperfect in that it, so right now, the one-to-one -one parking uh, per unit is causing them to be short. And so it would be very easy for them to say, well, we'll just take the same amount of square footage and make them make some two-bedroom units, and then we'll have fewer units, um, but the same amount of bedrooms, and all of a sudden that makes our parking problem go away. 
Um, you know, I, I'm more of a proponent of parking per bedroom than per unit. Uh, and that's something we've been looking at as staff or maybe finding some hybrid between the two. Um, but that's something we would explore with the planning commission as we went along through the process. Uh, Commissioner Elliott. I, I'm just thinking out loud, John, but was it three, four, or five years ago you posed the question to the same commissions and council members and everything as to making a determination, are we suburban or urban? And that's a question that we're going to have to answer on everything that comes up. And, well, and, and the reality is, you know, I mean, they've got places in Minneapolis that, I mean, they have 17 spots for like 200 units. Um, I won't ever go that far, but but we really have to balance that out. And and once again, that's where the neighbors become really important because there are no streets. There's no street parking in there. So we want to make sure that the one to one works so that we're not we're not leaching parking spots out of Lake Winds or Henley or the the four units that are there with the large parking in back. So we don't want people moving around and parking their cars and then walking in and everything like that. And I think. I, I think the demographics will prove that if you've got 22 units or 80 units that are all similar sized and, and their studios or one bedrooms, that you're going to have significantly less vehicles than you've got units. And that's, that's just the way I think it's going. And I think, first of all, that, that urban suburban conflict is what makes Richfield so cool. It's what makes Richfield so great. Um, mm -hmm. And it's very location specific. This is whatever you want to call it, lakes at Lindale, downtown. This is our downtown. And I think the expectations for somebody here, a, a resident here, would be different than if it were at 75th and Oliver. And so, but we only have one standard, whether it's here or 75th and Oliver. Right. Thank you. Council Member Whalen. Um, I just, one more comment. Um, I'm totally comfortable moving forward without another work session. I'm excited about the project. Um, I would just, what, at whatever point it becomes official that it's moving forward, um, would just hope, and maybe this is already your plan, uh, that you would reach out to the tenants in the existing building as soon as you're certain it's moving forward and can get those plans rolling and give people an idea of what to expect as soon as possible. Um, well, um, each, most of the leases right now in that building are, are um, month to month, so for the the continuity, you, like we have a plan that we follow as to when we tell them, and the city of Richfield has a, you have a nice um, protocol that you sent out to us um, to make sure that the goal is to keep people in place and not make them disrupt their life because they think there's a new owner coming and all that kind of stuff. So we, we follow a strict plan to make sure that the tenants are um, taken care of and it's in our best interest to keep the tenants. You know, you don't want a vacant unit by any means. We would also be doing a neighborhood meeting probably somewhere along the time of a, the real HRA meeting or, or just prior to that so that the, the neighbors, the immediate neighbors are, are informed as to what we're proposing as well. Great. And Commissioner Kwam. Um, just back to that. When you made a comment about that they probably wouldn't have to move out, but I mean, that's kind of a big um, unknown. Um, so when will you know if they're going to have to, they, they, they sound like they don't, they're lower income. So moving somewhere temporarily is a huge thing, I think, especially for that income level. I think it would probably be after we do a, a, a complete sort of survey of the building. So if we did find out there was some piping, that's, that's a, that's a mm -hmm. game changer as far as renovation mm -hmm. scope of work. But I know we have done uh, our, our company along with the, uh, the general contractor that we use, which is Frana Companies, has done a lot of uh, affordable housing projects and renovation where you can do it in place. It's just you're in and out during the day, and and then but people can move back into a functioning apartment in the evening. So it, it can it can be done. It's just a matter of making sure we don't have any major yeah. mechanical issues or plumbing issues that would need that level. Oh, that of makes sense. Um, and just another, my input on the parking thing, um, even setting aside the urban versus suburban argument, um, and just for trying to understand where you're coming from, Commissioner Lavin, um, because they are so many efficiencies, don't you think that 
makes it more in alignment with a one to one because one point two five is for every size all jet. And so I just want to understand no, what think, are you thinking there. I, I can give some more color on that. I think that you know, in a project like this where we have um, options like the, the the parking lot to the north, um, you know, I think should be explored in a situation like this. And I, I I'm not 100 percent buying in that the the, the urban effect um, you know will get you down somewhere you know after one to one because there's visitors there's. There's girlfriends, there's wives, there's people that share studio apartments, and and one to one is so thin that there's no room for anything other than that to bleed off into the streets. And when you're developing our corridors like Richfield does, and you have neighborhoods um, that abut to this, I think we need to be respectful of those neighbors, and I think we need to be cognizant that the parking, if it doesn't turn out the way that everyone thinks it might, could bleed into those neighborhoods and have an impact. So situations like this, where there are options, I think it it's incumbent upon us as commissioners, as, as decision makers, to make sure we explore those options to alleviate any of that uh, potential impact. So that's my thoughts. Great. Any other comments or questions? Co uh, Commissioner Hayford O'Leary. Um, another thing about parking, surprisingly. Uh, <laughs> The it would be helpful to hear what your experience has been with other buildings, especially if it does come to planning commission with this, just to understand that you said there are Minneapolis, but Minneapolis is a big place with different types of spaces. So something at Diamond Lake and Nicolet is probably more relevant to us than on the Greenway and Uptown or something. But I would love to know what your parking utilization looks like at other projects you've done to help understand how it might look here. Yeah, those are easy facts. Thank you. I can say working downtown, there was a, an apartment building that went up right on LaSalle that absolutely has no parking. But the difference is there, it's surrounded by four parking ramps. You know, obviously that's not the case here. Great. All right, with that, we will adjourn this work session early. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming.